Eric Stoby Weed with the Utah Avalanche Center. I'm up here on Logan Peak and we're in the fairgrounds at the scene of a large avalanche which occurred yesterday on the 13th of uh, January. And uh, this is a huge hard slab avalanche. It failed on weak faceted snow near the ground. Um, it rained anywhere from a foot to six feet deep. Uh, it ran the full length. And uh, it's just amazing that uh, that one snowmobiler was able to be rescued. Uh, if he'd been higher up on the slope, down the bottom there, there's probably about 20 feet of deposition in spot. So definitely a large avalanche and uh, it's what exactly that we've been forecasting for. some uh, avalanche activity with Toby and quite impressed with the amount of very large avalanches I have witnessed here today. No less than five, probably class three, maybe small class four avalanches. Snapping trees, very destructive. Uh, many of them could have been natural. Bunch of them most likely sled triggered as well. So we came up here today to kind of take a look at the accident that happened yesterday. Uh, Brett Kobernick came up from Salt Lake and Toby Weed and myself came up. Uh, we have some information from a third party uh, about what happened. Uh, supposedly three snowmobilers were up here, uh, one of whom was caught while not on his sled. Uh, we don't know where he was located when he was caught, but he was eventually buried right here and luckily found by his party and dug out by hand with sticks. He did not have a beacon again supposedly. The avalanche itself is uh, huge. <laughs> uh, full depth to the ground. So I'm standing kind of in the middle part of the deposition and uh, the piles are just incredibly huge. I don't know, this particular one I can imagine is at least 20 feet deep. That's probably an underestimation. But this is a massive, massive avalanche. Many, many football fields wide. bridge between the two slide paths and lo and behold more avalanches probably all triggered at the same time towers there. We're at the crown of this extraordinarily large avalanche that occurred yesterday about one. It's basically this is all the new snow that was blown in with those strong winds. It's a super hard one finger gets harder and harder all the way down and then below it there's a bit of a crust, thin crust, and then all that depth or it's sitting on rocks up here uh, the rest of the bed surface you'll see is shown so there's definitely a lot of facets up here that that wind-blown snow 
got put on top of and uh, just overloaded. And uh, we're still not quite sure of the trigger, but uh, it definitely wasn't from up here, it was from down below. Um, The avalanche failed on sugary faceted snow from around Thanksgiving. And it's pretty shallow layer here. It compressed down. Looks like uh, this stuff um, might have been here from that windy vent before Thanksgiving. Uh, but we've got faceted snow right here at the bottom of this huge hard slab. I can't stick my finger in it so hard and I can up here a little bit farther. You see there's several or at least a couple layers in here windblown snow. It ranges in depth from about a foot deep to six feet deep and Lo and behold, there are facets on the ground up here. It's a pretty thin layer. I'm in a pretty rocky area right here, but you can see that big, thick wind slab just sitting on top of it. It's a really exposed area, especially for the west winds. It just collects snow and uh, fills right in, creates this ginormous wind slab. And this path does have a history of running big five years ago. It did kill two snowmobilers right down in the same run-out zone. So just did a quick ECT test and uh, got up to about 16 before that wind slab just exploded out of there and uh, tumbled down the slope. But obviously, you can see if I don't fall over, that's what it failed on, which are very large facets sitting on the ground. Probably extra large since we're by some rocks here, but it was a pretty energetic pop and uh, just exploded right out of there.